Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today you join me as we check out this Audi S3 Saloon, a stage one 370 horsepower version uh, and it's owner Ryan who's going to talk us around the car. So this is a 2017 Audi S3 Saloon in Navara Blue Metallic, which is a really, really nice colour. Um, we've got some mods to this car as well, as you can see. And this car is actually for sale. Um, so we'll talk to Ryan a bit about that and what he's going to move on to next. So uh, this is Ryan. You might remember him from uh, the Golf GTI Mark II videos. Uh, I've actually had a few people ask me about that recently. So oh. we'll have to do a bit of an update on that soon. Very much but, so. um, yeah. yeah, talk to me. How long have you had the car? Uh, I think we started maybe a couple of years ago now. I had a decent chunk of money sitting there, so you do what everyone does. Um, and you go and buy a nice car. And you go buy a nice car. Uh, so at the minute, we're running the Racing Line Stage 1 uh, ECU and TCU map, uh, along with Racing Line Springs, brake pads, brake lines, the R600 and a Forge turbo in in pipe um, max and design kit all the way around um, i left off the rear spats because i don't think it looked yeah, decent I, enough I to go on it was quite clean without them to be fair like yeah i don't know i found like I, on the on the cooper that i had i did want that kind of extension there just to blend in with the sides but yeah it does look good and obviously the rear diffuser being the main thing it looks a bit rs3 esque Definitely. with that with that diffuser on there yeah um but yeah i mean this was pretty much like my dream daily car when you bought it and i was extremely jealous when you had it but it's we kind, kind of uh, it's kind of like meeting your heroes isn't it it's yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's an amazing amazing car for what it does yeah it's, yeah yeah it's absolutely brilliant um like we say all the time with most of the mqb platform you know the, the r's the s3s they're a point and shoot Oh, 100 percent and it, and it does absolutely everything you need it to do um in the time that i've owned this i've had um you know i've had a daughter and the car just fit right in everything goes in it um it's such an amazing daily um sometimes we need to let go don't we so uh... that's it but um, the one thing that I mean we've kind of discussed it a little bit off camera is that actually the saloon even though it is uh, you know it's, it's beautiful there's no question about that but it's not exactly the most practical format in the world especially when you think about like estate cars and stuff like that mm. like if we have a oh if we have a look in the back here like yeah I mean it's quite a big opening you've got quite a bit of space in there but at the same time you know it's it's not the, the easiest opening to live with. Like it's quite a small gap you got there and there's a massive load lip as well, which doesn't help. Um, so the hatch just kind of is a little bit more practical, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think like we said before, if it was a, if it was a true five door, which I mean, you would start running into ruining body lines and things like that. But if, if this window just came up and it didn't have such a huge parcel shelf. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be so much better, but you know, if you want that, then you go and buy an Avant. Yeah, true. Or, or so, a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. Or that. And then you get yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah. Or an S3 hatch, which, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah, another thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was on the, that was on the cards um, for quite a while before I got this, but yeah, I, I think I decided with this. And, and I don't regret it. it. It's been, like I say, it's been absolutely incredible. But, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Um, and this is the facelift car as well. So this one yes. has the kind of the the redesigned front end, which I do think really kind of lifted the car at the time. Um, so you've got like the LED running lights, uh, the sort of the newer grille and bumper style, which obviously is accentuated by this uh, Maxton kit. So I mean, headline figures. Normally these cars are three ten, and they've got the Quattro system, so they're all wheel drive. So yeah, definitely point and shoot. But uh, this one obviously is running the Stage One map, um, also exhaust, right? Yep, yeah, uh, no exhaust, just a resonator delete. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so what I've been told, it's never been on a dyno, but with the R600 and the map, you should be seeing about 370, 380. At the end yeah. of the day, the good thing about these, these engines are the two litre turbo platform, the EA888, so this one will have the IS38 turbo. Um, you can get a lot of power out of them. Um, and not only that, but they're still return sort of a sensible 30 mile per gallon. Yeah, I think the highest I've had out of this, I mean, I have a bit of a heavy foot but uh <laughs> <coughs> the most i've ever had out of this is 38 yeah that's not bad really and, and that's coming back from wales 
Yeah, I mean, that's not bad considering the sort of uh, the amount of power that you got on hand. So let's have a little poke around inside and see what we got. So obviously everything Audi is always quite nice. I've, you know, I've recently got myself a TT, as you've probably seen on the channel, and everything, all the Audi switch gear, like the steering wheels and all the stuff, you know, it's all just really nice quality, especially if you're coming out of one of the other MQB cars, like a Golf or a Cooper or something like that. Mm. There is just a bit of a step up here. Uh, yeah. So Ryan's added the uh, the carbon. This is um, proper carbon fibre inserts as well. So you've got them along there. You've got them inside the car as well uh, really makes it nice and it comes with the uh, what they call super sport seats super sports super yeah. sports yeah so the diamond quilting which is really nice um a lot of people say they're a bit of hype it's, yeah. it's definitely uh, a personal preference if i do say um, what is nice is the diamond stitching does extend into the back as well so we've yeah. got that in the back of the car um, and as you can see this has been used as a family hauler with the isofix points it's nice that they've got the sort of the flip up um or they're not are they removable covers i think they're um, just removable, removable. Yeah. yeah i think flip up ones are better but uh, removable is still good at least they don't kind of ruin the lever um, no. in there and the, the sort of space in the back is alright as well so it, it's quite practical for your daily driver it's just that obviously if you wanted a bit more space in the back then something like a Cupra 300 Estate which is four wheel drive as well or a Golf R Estate or something is going to be a more practical car but all the Audi stuff is just really nice the virtual cockpit I think is the best of the MQB bunch I think that's much better than the ones in the uh, Volkswagens and the uh, Seats it just the, the system just works a bit nicer and this has your central infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay uh, and Android Auto as well, which obviously you control with a click wheel. No touch screen in there, but um, yeah, it does everything that it says on the tin. So uh, yeah, overall, really nice spec this one. Um, and the wheels as well. I think these were optional, right, as well, because I think it comes with 18s as standard, if I, I remember rightly. I believe so, yeah. 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 Uh, so this one's got the optional 19 inch um, alloys obviously adorned with uh, Pilot Sport 4 S's which are the absolutely correct tyres to have on a car like this. Um, I rave about them all the time. I had them on my Cupra, um, I'm looking to get them on my TT because they make such a difference to the performance and the handling of the car um, and really eliminate the issues that were kind of on the car when it was new. Um, I suppose it probably came with like P0s or something. Yeah, yeah. so it comes with the Audi rated P0s and I had nothing but issues. Yeah, big yeah. Issues. Um, understeering, it's stepping out. You know, you, you go into any sort of surface that isn't dry, and it's always a bit of a. It's the, the, the feedback. Yeah, doesn't yeah. feel as nice as as the pilot sports. Hundred percent. I feel like I get a lot of understeer on my TT with the uh, the P zeros. Yeah. yeah so it's so agree. important. You know, if you do test drive one of these cars, or if you do have a go in one, you know, you might get in it and you might think if you're, especially if you're coming from something like a you know a BMW or something that's got a lot of um, uh, sort of driving feel, uh, yeah. you might get in something like this and think to yourself, well, this doesn't handle right. And make sure you check the tires before you do that, because at the end of the day, I think it makes such a such a difference. Oh, definitely. They they really were at the time a really really nice car I think the one trouble is and again this is something we discussed off camera earlier Audi has this trouble with uh, bringing out a new car and as soon as they bring out a new car the old one looks really dated um, you'll notice if you look at this compared to like a brand new s3 saloon uh, it's such a difference in terms of the styling that this one um, it just looks like a different class now um, and the trouble is that extends to some of the bigger cars as well like the Audi s5 um, now pretty much that styling is on the standard Audi S line models. It has the same wheels as the old S5 did. It has the same body kit. Um, so if you bought an S5 about five years ago, you're probably feeling a little bit sorry for yourself now because everyone who's driving around in a 72 plate diesel looks, if, if not better, than the style in your car. And that's, that is a shame, but it does mean that they're evolving. Um, and I think this is still a very, very pretty car. Um, and of course you can get this in RS3 variant as well. So, uh, you know, you can get those in the same sort of trim. It just has kind of bigger body kit and all that kind of thing but I think the Maxton kit that's on this one really helps uh, kind of make it look a bit more aggressive and this one is lowered as well right yep yeah so it's on a 25 mil racing line lowering springs yeah, it sounds good even just with a res delete right yeah yeah even just a res delete you do get quite a nice feel to it and uh, these LED lights look amazing as well switched on So, going for a drive in the S3. Let's just give it a bit of poke here. <laughs> yeah, first impressions, it's not too bad on these um, on these springs. Like, I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit too firm under the seat, but yeah, it feels all right. Yeah, when it goes into dynamic, it is 
it is so stiff like you're riding on coilovers. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice because, you know, you, you can balance it out. If you want it that way, you can have it and if you want it back to comfort and just normal daily driver, you've got passengers and all that. You can yeah, 100%. Just flick it back. That exhaust is a bit naughty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and just for a resonator delete as well, nothing different. Yeah, that's the thing with these pre-GPF cars, like, you do get so much more in terms of noise. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but overall, as like a daily driver, obviously you've got all your mod cons in here. Like I get a nice driving position, elbows like this. These super sport seats are firm, but mm. but I think they're quite nice. I could probably do a long journey in them. Yeah, and just overall Audi quality. Like everything's nice to touch. Everything's within reach. All the switches feel really nice. Um, so you know, if you was to come out of a Golf R, for example, and get in here, you'd feel like everything is slightly nicer in your hand. Um, and I do think the Audi steering wheel is the best of the bunch in terms of the MQB stuff as well. Um, it just, yeah, it just kind of feels the nicest. The materials, the buttons, and the layout, I think, is the best. Um, definitely, it feels quality-wise a big step up from the Cooper that I had before. So that's, that's quite nice. In the terms of options as well, um, you've got the Tech Pack, which is your wireless charging in the in the cockpit here, uh, and the virtual cockpit. Yeah, virtual cockpit, I think, is the best in the business when it comes to your, your digital infotainment. Yeah, definitely. Um, Obviously, this one's got your central screen as well, but the virtual cockpit, you can have your sports display in this one, which is the centre dial, which you would have seen in some of the shots. And then, of course, you've got like your actual full maps as well, and you can get um, lots of information there for your nav and that kind of thing. So I think that's probably... Um, it's the smoothest, I think. It's, it feels a lot better. The maps on it feel a lot better than the ones in my um, Cupra did. Obviously, that was a slightly newer car as well, so it just goes to show that Audi kind of reserved the best for their own cars at the top. Um, which is probably the way it should be, really, at the end of the day, when you look at the price of these new. Um, so prices for these now are kind of fetching sort of between 22 and 24k for a nice one, um, which is probably where this one's going to be priced. Um, so yeah, obviously, uh, being for sale, do get in touch with me if you're looking to purchase one. Oh, and Greg's? Greg's drive for it, boy. Mad. <laughs> That's the first one I've seen, you know. Yeah, same. This feels a lot like my TT. Um, very, very familiar, but obviously just a lot more power. Yeah. Cool, it does pull, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so like we were having that discussion before, um, IS-20 versus IS-38. Yeah. He's saying about how the IS-20, it's, it's that low down grunt. Uh-huh. Um, coming from this and trying it I've never really noticed it before until you said about it and you do kind of find in the TT especially I mean it's still a standard map but, yeah you know like one to three you've still got quite a bit of a pull there yeah 100%. whereas this you really got to get up to the high two the higher end yeah and, so and then yeah and then you start really feeling it yeah, I mean the IS20, so that'll be the one, if you're unfamiliar, that's fitted on the kind of the entry-level Audi TT with a two-litre turbo, um, also the Volkswagen Golf GTI famously, uh, and that sort of tier of engine, so the sort of 230 brake models. Um, and the IS20 turbo has a lot of that low down torque, but then it really tapers off at the end, whereas this IS38 turbo, which is fitted to the Golf R, the S3, the Cupra, is the other way round, so you'll find that it low down, there's not a lot there, but then when the boost kicks in, it really builds, um, yeah, so it kind of varies based on which car you have, but yeah you can tell with this one it's it's high end where it really excels um, and the four-wheel drive system um, really comes into its own on these tires as well yeah it does not stop either I mean you get it right up to right up to red line and it still feels like it just wants to go so I mean I quite like the exhaust of the red delete as well I mean you can really unlock a lot of sound in these cars just with a basic exhaust mod because of the yeah. pre-GPF. The GPF cars are a different story. Yeah. And it, it is possible to, it's just cool. Grip, 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 lovely. It just does not let loose at all. It's so no, predictable. No. Yeah, very predictable. And that's the, um, the Haldex four-wheel drive system is really good. Although they are front biased, I believe, aren't they? Right, so yes. we're at 50 mile an hour here. Let's see how quickly we can get to the limit. Foot down. Yeah, it's good. Pulls really well. Yeah. Um, you probably find with like, um, if you were to go sort of hybrid turbos and really start getting
getting up in the crazy power, which you can do with these engines, then that's going to really help with your high end stuff. But for your day to day, I've always said that sort of 300 brake is more than enough in your daily driver. So this at sort of 370 uh, round town feels absolutely rapid. And if yeah. this is the sort of speed that I can achieve out of the, uh, the TT, I'll be more than happy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised. It's, it's really nicely weighted, the wheel. Um, I think it is a little bit firm, this one being obviously on aftermarket uh, suspension, but it's still perfectly livable. It's not going to shatter your spine like, you know, coilovers would do and that kind of thing. So it, it's not bad at all. Um, and just cruising along, get a tiny bit of drone from the Res Delete, but um, overall, like, noise is okay in the cabin. Um, I've got all the information I need in front of me on the virtual cockpit and it just becomes a nice cruiser. You can get up, start achieving 35, 40 to the gallon if you're really light footed. Um, and it just makes for a nice experience. But then of course, when you want to, you can just put your foot down and it. <laughs> it's weird feeling in front of passenger seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So strange. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning what it's like to be a passenger princess <laughs> in his own car. <laughs> so when I was having the map put on, uh, speaking with Adam, the, uh, obviously you've all seen him before in the Cooper video when we've done the Resonate delete. Yeah. Um, I was talking about the pops and bangs and things like that. And a very good thing is, especially with the racing line map, is you can choose how much you want. Mm. You know, you can either go fully asbo. Um, <laughs> and go to the absolute nines and you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Make so where does this sit on that scale then? This one? It's quite low. Quite low. Yeah, yeah I kind of get that impression because it will, it will kind of burble if you want it to, like. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't. It's not excessive. No. And this is the max that it will ever do because right. it is in dynamic. Yes. Um, yeah. The only time you really get it is after you've done like a really long drive. All your exhaust is hot. Everything is hot. Yeah. Um, and you just pin it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. pin it, and then as soon as you let off, like you heard earlier, it, it will do it. And you'll hear a little quick pop, 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 and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as much as you'll get out of it. But when you are in dynamic, it does obviously do a bit more on the overrun. So yeah, if, I think you can go. I mean, a lot of people say they prefer the sound of like a, a, a six in it, like a B58 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, I do really enjoy the sound of these engines when they just have just the right exhaust on, not too, yeah. not too crazy, but just enough to get the DSG bangs and all that kind of thing. I think yeah. they do sound really good. I think it surprised a lot of people that, uh, you know, of just a four cylinder turbo yeah. can make a noise like this. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's the way the market's going anyway, right? Like the new C63 yeah. we we're talking about, that's a four cylinder with like a hybrid system. System, and I think a lot of engines are going to be like that now. And yeah. when you look at what people are getting out of these new Golf R's, like the Mark 8s and stuff like that, you yeah. can get absolutely absurd power out of them and with the right turbo setup and that kind of thing and the right map and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, definitely. So it's it's definitely a good um, a good platform. And MQB stuff is so popular, you know, mm. uh, between this and the BMW world, um, they're kind of the most tunable engines really in, in this sort of day and age for yeah. sort of a modern refined car but with silly power that you can use at all, all times. Um, and that's where Quattro really comes into play. Yeah. Um, and, and that sort of system is you can just use it every day. Um, and when it's slippery and nasty out, you can still kind of get where you need to be. She goes. She goes. <laughs> she goes and she goes well. Yeah, it's very sure of itself, isn't it? Yeah. Very flat. Absolutely. Thanks to the confident. suspension setup. And that's the good thing about these. I mean, yeah, some would argue that you might have more fun on a road like this in something rear wheel drive, um, you know, like a BMW or something like that, mm, potentially. But my argument would be you'd kind of be worried in these conditions that it might step out on you. Which, of course, can be the fun of it sometimes, but if you just want something that's point and shoot, then an all-wheel drive car really makes a lot of sense, um, especially in the conditions. Depending on the type of fun you want yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. You know, if you're not wanting to go balls to the wall and you're not wanting to try and get the back out on every corner and things like that, these cars are perfect for it. There's also the opposite end of the spectrum though, which is, um, you know, I've been out obviously this week in the Picanto, which is only like 100 horsepower, little one litre turbo manual. Um, and on a road like this, I could absolutely ring that car out. And you know, it would, it would make a lot of sense when it comes to like twisty little roads. Um, but I don't know, like it's difficult on it. Like you say, it really depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, 
like I can't I can't put this car through its paces here because the road is too narrow it's you know it's too short for the blind corners if I plant it we're going to just go off into that field and kill Miss Daisy so I don't think it's it's very practical but at the same time there are those occasions where you can really ring it out survived. all's well that ends well thanks to Quattro all-wheel drive system why are there so many pedestrians on this road I don't know I don't like it anyway bang it bang it bang it bang it back to usual business <laughs> straight to the 30 oh now that is right business cool let's get her into sport mode yeah That high end feels really nice. So addictive, isn't it? Yeah. Just wants to be there all the time. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a little just a crack of external noise, shall we? Yep. Woohoo! Chuck on the left here. Ho ho ho. Cool, it really yeah. grips as well. Yeah. I really do. Uh, I do. Audi done such a good job. We're just riding that fine line between, you know, having a having an animal but also making it so discreet at the same time. Yeah. Oh I love those crackles. That's the thing about a car like this, like you say, you can really, really enjoy it, but at the same time, when you just want to put it back down into normal drive mode, all of a sudden it will just settle down, Yep. and it's your daily driver. And that's it. That's the best thing about something like an Audi Quattro. Yeah. Very livable day to day. Yeah. So, if you guys are looking for one of these, and this one is for sale, um, so do message me about it uh, in the comments below or send an email to my business email, which is in the description, um, and I'll get you in touch with Ryan so that you can discuss the car. Um, but if you are looking to purchase a used car, it is always worth using a car vertical check. So, your car vertical check will test all things like accident damage, uh, mileage rollbacks, thefts, all that good stuff, uh, making sure that you don't buy yourself a lemon. So, you can use my code in the description below Danlat that will make sure that you get 10% off um, and I'll pop up here a check that we've done on this very car so there we have it guys that was the stage one tuned Audi S3 saloon I've met one of my heroes now and I've got to say as a daily driver you can't really go wrong unless you need a little bit more space in the back but then get a Gulf R estate and you'll be fine uh, so thank you guys so much for watching 20 car uh, out your end no <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Ryan for letting me borrow the car for today. No worries. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye bye. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs>